In Greek mythology, Prometheus shaped man out of clay, and Athena breathed life into the clay figure. Prometheus stands for human progress against the forces of nature, and he gave humanity the gifts of fire and hope. Hope helps human beings to struggle for a better future while fire, as the source of technology, makes success in that struggle possible. Indeed, the genesis of humankind and the mastery of fire by early humans is a hot topic in paleoanthropology. We know more about the Neanderthals than any other extinct human species. Thousands of their artifacts and fossils, including several nearly complete skeletons, have been discovered. They hunted the same large game, practiced similar burial rituals, used similar tools, walked upright, had language, and even used fire. According to new research, cave-dwelling Neanderthals discovered how to use the chemical properties of manganese dioxide, to start wood fire 60,000 years ago. The new research discovered distinct hydrocarbons from ancient hearths in a cave inhabited up to 60,000 years ago. Neanderthals were masters at making and controlling fires. The fact that the Neanderthals preferred manganese dioxide over the others, suggests that it was used for a purpose related to some other distinguishing feature. Abrasion marks on the ore chunks indicate that they were ground into powder by stone. The study lends support to the theory that Neanderthals and other early humans were capable of creating fires, as opposed to simply exploiting natural wildfires. While there is no direct evidence that manganese dioxide was used as a fire starter, researchers did discover that when powdered and added to wood chips, the temperature required to cause the wood to combust was significantly reduced. As a result, it has the potential to provide significant insights into Neanderthal cognitive capabilities. Meanwhile, despite not being made of clay, the Neanderthals had a long evolutionary history. Researchers have known for a long time that Neanderthals, with their barrel chests and robust limbs, were well adapted for survival in Europe's frigid temperatures, where their fossils date back more than 400,000 years. To be honest, scientists have no idea where the Neanderthals' ancestors came from. The oldest known Neanderthal-like fossils date back around 430,000 years. The most well-known Neanderthals lived between approximately 130,000 and 40,000 years ago, after which all physical evidence of them vanished. According to experts, Neanderthals are our closest extinct relative. We're similar in many ways. Yet, experts agree that we have our differences. These differences can be seen in a split from a common ancestor that occurred more than 600,000 years ago. Still, scientists have been unable to identify the species that links us. Nonetheless, humans and Neanderthals have very different skeletal shapes. These differences indicate that for hundreds of thousands of years, there was a split in evolution. Older modern human remains, on the other hand, have a larger brow, bulkier teeth, and more robust skeletons the difference in features actually becomes less pronounced as the remains get closer to the mystery ancestor. Nonetheless, we know about their genetic makeup, thanks to the reconstruction of several Neanderthal genomes, from ancient DNA extracted from their fossils. After two human species, Neanderthals, and modern humans, diverged from a common ancestor, they became unmistakably distinct in both appearance and DNA. When DNA evidence is available, researchers use it, but when it is not, they rely on anatomy to distinguish between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Humans have a high and rounded brain case, a small brow, a chin on the lower jaw, and a slimmer bone structure than animals. In comparison, Neanderthals have a longer, lower skull, a larger nose, brow, and no chin. The warm climate in Africa, where the earliest Homo sapiens lived, has had a greater impact on DNA preservation than Neanderthal remains discovered further north in Europe and Asia. In ancient Europe, Neanderthals shivered and suffered, while Homo sapiens enjoyed the warmer climates to the south. Experts must determine when the split occurred in order to locate this common ancestor. The earliest known Neanderthal fossils date back approximately 430,000 years. The earliest Homo sapiens fossils date back 350,000 years, but older modern human remains have yet to be discovered. Long ago, in a land that would one day be known as England, lived a remarkable early Neanderthal woman. She was represented by the Swanscombe skull, a fossil that was discovered 400,000 years later by archaeologists. But let us delve into her story and imagine her life in that distant past. The Neanderthal woman lived in a small community of early humans nestled along the banks of a river. 
the landscape around her was vastly different from what we see today. Dense forests, teeming with wildlife, stretched as far as the eye could see. The climate was colder and harsher, but her people had learned to adapt. She possessed remarkable strength and resilience, even by Neanderthal standards. Her powerful frame, robust bones, and prominent brow ridges were well suited for the challenges of survival in this ancient world. She was an expert at foraging for food, skilled in identifying edible plants and roots that sustained her people during lean times. Her community consisted of a tightly knit group, and they relied on each other for protection and support. They communicated through a complex system of grunts, gestures, and primitive words, sharing their knowledge and experiences to ensure their collective survival. She had a mate who was a strong and skilled hunter. Together, they would set out on hunting expeditions, tracking animals through the dense forests armed with primitive spears and stone tools. They would bring down large game like mammoths and deer, providing much-needed sustenance for the community. Life was not without its dangers, her and her people often encountered fierce predators like cave bears and saber-toothed cats. They had learned to respect these creatures and devised strategies to protect themselves. Their survival depended on their deep understanding of the natural world and the ability to work as a team. In the evenings, she would gather around the communal fire with her kin. They would share stories, legends, and experiences, passing down their knowledge from one generation to the next. She marveled at the intricacy of their cave paintings, which adorned the walls of their dwellings. These vibrant paintings depicted scenes from their lives, the animals they revered, and the spirits they believed watched over them. As the years passed, she witnessed changes in her community. New generations were born, and some of the younger members began to explore distant lands, seeking new resources and opportunities. The world around them was evolving, and she adapted, embracing the challenges and opportunities it presented. Eventually, her time came, and she passed away, leaving behind a legacy that would be discovered centuries later in the form of the Swanscombe skull. Through this ancient relic, scientists would gain insight into the life of an early Neanderthal woman who roamed the lands of England thousands of years ago. Her story is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of our human ancestors. She navigated a world vastly different from our own, yet her experiences, emotions, and the bonds she formed with her community resonate across time. In the depths of her being, she was a trailblazer, an adventurer, and a survivor, a symbol of the strength and determination that has propelled our species forward since the dawn of time. The Swanscombe skull, a fossil from England's Thames Valley, is actually the back half of a brain case. It was formed during a warm interglacial period approximately 400,000 years ago. It is thought to have belonged to an early Neanderthal woman. Her brain imprinted itself on the surrounding bone. It was the same size as human brains today, but shaped slightly differently, according to faint impressions of folds and blood vessels. The back of the skull has a distinctive Neanderthal feature, a small pit called the suprainiac fossa, that marks the edge of where the neck muscles attach to the skull. The Steinheim cranium, discovered in Germany and estimated to be 250,000 to 350,000 years old, is also thought to belong to an early Neanderthal. It has a similar overall shape to the Swanscombe skulls and the Superiniac fossa. However, Neanderthals went extinct suddenly and mysteriously 40,000 years ago, with their culture and fossils completely disappearing from the archaeological record after that time. Experts once thought Homo heidelbergensis, an early human species known to be the first to build shelters, was the missing link, but newer research has called this theory into question. Many Homo heidelbergensis fossils were discovered to be too young to be the common ancestor. Rather, some Homo heidelbergensis specimens were contemporaneous with modern humans and Neanderthals, not an ancestral link, whereas others lumped into that classification are actually early Neanderthals. Thus, we need to go even deeper into the fossil record to solve the mystery, and we're not there yet. We'll be in a better position to know for sure once we have a better fossil record from around 600,000 to 800,000 years ago. As regards the morphological distinction between sapiens and erectus phylogeneticists recognize them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, in accordance with their overlapping morphology. According to phylogenetic studies, in the light of this relationship the divergence between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals 800,000 years ago becomes anchored in.
Eurasia in accordance with the principle of last common ancestor and the strict limitation of Neanderthals to this continent. Furthermore, due to the limitation of Neanderthals to Eurasia and the introgression and the continuous evolution of both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, the last common ancestor can only be placed in this continent. Therefore, the phylogenetic nature of the Homo sapiens branch is consistent with the strict limitation of Neanderthals, the mitochondrial DNA sister group of Homo sapiens to Eurasia and the mitochondrial DNA introgression, that took place from Homo sapiens into Neanderthals approximately 500,000 years ago.